All right, it's time to start. And as you notice, I will be speaking English in this class for this year. Uh, that's because we have a uh, lot of uh, foreign students attending the course also from Växjö. So this is the first time I will be doing this in English and it will be a uh, advantageous, I think, because I will be uh, practicing my English a lot and I don't have to translate every little strange word that's already in the book uh, into Swedish. And I also think that you will have the opportunity to practice your English also if you want to. You can ask questions in Swedish or in English. And that goes for the uh, chat also, that uh, either uh, Swedish or uh, English is available. I will just do some discussion notes. Hide. Thank you. I will be keeping an eye on the chat. If we have some people in the audience with a computer that also is uh, with uh, Adobe Connect, you can always try to wave your hand if there's some interesting question in the chat and I'm, I'm missing it. But I will be trying to keep an eye on it. It's not that easy, especially after the summer when you're not used to it again. Uh, I hope you all had a nice summer. Have you been coding a lot? No one? Uh, we will be coding a lot in this course, uh, especially the second half of it. There will be a lot of programming. If you don't have a good knowledge of object-oriented programming, start getting it now. Do some repetition of, on the C-sharp C course or on the Java courses that you have attended because uh, the object-oriented programming is the foundation for uh, learning the more advanced stuff. We need some, some kind of base knowledge to build new knowledge on. Uh, we will be taking a look at the, the course homepage first, I think. I hope you have all found it. Uh, we will be going through it today. Uh, we will be doing some repetition of uh, previous stuff today, and we will do a small example and introduction today. Uh, but you can find all the information you need about the course on the course homepage. <coughs> uh, one thing to note is uh, to take a look at it, especially before the lectures. As some of you know, I have small children. Small children tend to become sick sometimes, and I will be posting here if uh, I'm not able to make it to a lecture. So please take a look. I will be posting as soon as possible. But you never know. Uh, if uh, there is some trouble, I will also try to send someone down here to tell you if it's with very short notice. So, all right. This course will be led by me. It is a, quite a traditional course, as you will see later. Uh, you can reach me via mail, uh, via Skype, or uh, via GitHub. Uh, in Växjö, you will be having Nadim Abbas as your tutor. And here in Kalmar, Emil Karlsson will be the tutor. So I will mainly see you in lectures, which is a little bit sad for me, I think, because the tutoring is always fun. But time is uh, of the essence, so... Literature in the course. Applying UML and Patterns to third edition. Get it if you have not already done so. Uh, I think students in, in Kalmar and on the web development program and uh, developer of digital services already has, have had this book as a course literature. So basically this course will uh, take on the other chapters. Yeah, I, I think that you, you who are close to Växjö could attend the workshops uh, in Växjö in, instead. I will just check this with uh, Nadine.
So, all right, you have some, uh, some reading instructions here. And, and one thing to notice is that if you click this English button here, you will get the course homepage in English. Uh, and it will be the same information. So, we have some vital chapters to focus on, quite a lot of them. Uh, you also have a few uh, chapters that are uh, not super important, but can be good to, to read to get the whole picture, so to say. Um, <clears throat> and I would like also to stress the use of the examples in the book. There are three examples. The Monopoly game, the point of sale system, and a persistence framework that uh, is designed in one of the chapters. Uh, it's very good to follow these examples in the book also, because we will be doing an, a parallel example in, on the lectures, so you will get a total of four examples uh, following this course. And examples are, are always good. We will be doing three workshops, and you have some uh, reading instructions for each workshop also. So please prepare by doing the theory uh, for each workshop, so you are prepared. Yeah, the book is, if you remember the organization of the book, it's uh, an iterative organization of the book also. So he does a little bit of everything in the first few chapters, then he goes deeper in the next chapters, and then he goes deeper in the next chapters on each subject. So the, there is no really uh, defined order of the book, actually. So it will be a little bit of uh, jumping here, here and there, because we will be doing it more uh, straightforward. We will be doing everything about one subject. So there will be some jumping in the uh, chapters. Yeah, uh, don't hesitate to ask any questions. Uh, and as I said, you can do it in Swedish, and I will repeat it because that's uh, needed anyway, and try to uh, translate it on the fly. We have the course schedule. <coughs> I've heard that there has been some trouble centrally getting the schedules to update on your student pages. I don't know if you have been uh, subject to that or if if the, uh, the schedule has uh, popped up for you. But it's uh, here anyway. And we have quite a few lectures this year, uh, a few more than last year. And that's good, because then we have some buffering time. Uh, if I get sick, if my kids get sick, or if we need to go deeper into some subject, uh, or something like that. Basically, we have two workshops, uh, two, two lectures in a week except those weeks where we have a workshop instead. Then you have one lecture. So this week, we have two lectures. Next week, one lecture and one workshop. Then we have a block of lectures, 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 lectures. And then the next week where the workshop comes. And it continues like this. So we should have plenty of time for the lectures, which is good. And the, there is the possibility that we won't be doing the last lectures, or we will just be doing repetitions or answering questions. You have a forum that you can use, a discussion forum. If you have any questions that you think other students could either be interested in or know the answer of, please post it in the forum. Uh, I will be checking the forums regularly, uh, posting my point of view on things. And it's always good to get a nice discussion there. So before sending me an email, think uh, if this question belongs in the forums instead. We have a course syllabus that you should always be aware of. We will be talking about the, the, I get the question here, what happens if you miss a workshop? We will be uh, discussing, discussing the workshops in a moment. So, all right, uh, the course is seven and a half points, credits. 
Uh, it's computer science. Uh, we have some prerequisites. 30 credits in the subject of computer science, computer technology, or informatics. And you need to have one object-oriented programming language. C-sharp course is listed here. Java is uh, perfectly fine. C++ or any other object-oriented language. What you will be learning is you will be understanding the concepts and principles of object-oriented analysis and design. You will be able to develop object-oriented models in UML, Unified Modeling Language, for different problems. You will be able to transform an object-oriented model into an object-oriented programming language and vice versa. So you will be able to produce code based on some kind of blueprint and you will be able to make a blueprint based on code. You will have basic knowledge in the use of design patterns and you will have basic knowledge in the use of refactoring as a design method. So refactoring is basically, okay, we have this design, we have this code present, how can we improve it? Yeah, we will be talking about the registrations uh, also in a little while. Yeah, the, the course is, of course, uh, examined, assessed, and you can get the grades fail, three, four, or five. We will have, uh, the workshops will actually decide your grade, if you go for grade three or four or five, is decided by your ambition on the workshops. So you can select, okay, uh, I need to focus on something else. I, I, I'm focusing on getting uh, the grade three. So then you do it to grade three in the, in the workshops. If you go for grade four, you go for grade four in the workshops. And grade five, you go for grade five in the workshops. And there will be an exam at the end that is made individually and it's a take-home exam so you will be uh, sitting down on your own doing this exam and then sending it in to me and that will decide if you pass or fail the course so if you pass the exam you will get the grade that you have on your workshops all right we will be talking a little bit more about that uh, also later so all right uh, the final exam, oh, I just talked about that. <laughs> uh, you have some, some, some text here, and uh, maybe the most interesting part is the example, uh, example, uh, example, exam questions there that you can take a look at. Last year we had an oral exam, so every student uh, had a, a small quiz with me, and they did some assignment. And this is examples of the assignments that they did. So you can take a look at that, and it will be probably something similar. But as we are a lot of students this year, there, there won't be time to sit down with uh, each and every one of you. So you have to do it in, in writing, and we will make an assessment of your result. So, all right. Uh, Next interesting item is the workshops. Uh, so we will be having three workshops uh, that will be uh, graded. And uh, you will do these workshops in small groups. You form these groups yourself. Group sizes between one and three people. So quite small groups. Uh, you can work solo if you want to or you can work in, in with a friend or two. Do not go for four or five in your groups because it will just add more work for you and the possibility that uh, some group members do not really get the course. You can change groups in between workshops or in between grades. So if I decide to work with a friend for the first workshop for grade three, I can switch with, to another friend for workshop three, but grade four. 
But it is important that you know who you worked with uh, in each step. The uh, workshops are not mandatory to uh, be at the occasions, but that is the opportunity you have to get tutoring. You can work on the workshops at home uh, in, on the weekend if you prefer that and don't attend the, the workshop uh, class. However, it is always good to, to attend because you will get tutoring and you will also have the opportunity to, opportunity to present your work to your peers, your other, the other students, and you can take a look at, oh, they, they solved this problem in this way, and you can always get some inspiration or extended knowledge in that way. <coughs> The, uh, the group setting is also important because I think uh, doing analysis and design is not something that you do solo. You do it in a team together with a few people. So this also increases the communication skills that you are practicing. Yeah. <coughs> the, the groups are not there for uh, task division. So it is not the meaning that person A does this, and then person B does that, and person C does the third thing in the workshop. But everyone does everything. So you sit down, you discuss, you develop your models, you do your uh, tasks and assignments together. That's why the groups also need to be small. There is a deadline for each workshop. After that deadline, you will be doing a peer review. That is, you will be getting some other group's work, and you will be uh, assessing it, taking a look at it, finding good points and weak points. And you will be sending them a protocol with suggestions. <coughs> and then they can continue working on their workshop after that. But it is important that you stick to the deadlines, because otherwise you won't be getting a peer review for your project and you will also be failing, of course. The result of the workshops you will be collecting in something that could be called a portfolio. So this could be something uh, simple like a Word document, a zip archive with your diagrams and your code or whatnot. It could be a home page, could be a GitHub repo or something else. It's nothing really advanced. We get a question about the workshop if they are recorded. No, they are not recorded. The workshop kind of like works like this, that you have a, a, a session at first where you are gathered. The tutor presents the problem and the assignment. And then you are free to work on your own during the workshop time. And the tutor will go around. And so you don't have to sit in a classroom. You can uh, go about and sit wherever you would like. Yes, missing, <coughs> missing a deadline means uh, failing the course. Uh, so don't miss any deadlines. There are basically four deadlines in this course. Yeah, you will be collecting your results uh, in some way that is accessible online. So that uh, both your peer review group can find the materials easily and uh, the examiner can find the materials easily. The actual assignments will be presented on the schedule location, and then they will be posted online at the course homepage also. So there is nothing to prepare uh, assignment specific for each occasion. You kind of get the assignment. But you should, of course, prepare by studying the theory. So looking at the lectures, reading the book, uh, checking into the examples that you have been doing. Tools for the workshops. Uh, the first workshop that is next week is uh, very low key. You need probably pen, paper, and a camera at, at the easiest because you will be doing some diagrams and 
You can do those on pen and paper and you can take a photo of it. That's about it. Uh, there are, of course, more advanced stuff, uh, softwares for doing these kind of diagrams. Uh, I don't really think it's necessary and we, it will probably just add complexity for you. In the later workshops, uh, in workshop two, you will be doing some coding. So then you need some kind of development environment of your choice. Uh, could be Java, could be C Sharp, could be C++, could be Visual Studio, could be Eclipse or, or whatnot. But you should be able to produce working uh, software. And in the third uh, workshop, you will be changing some existing code. And that code will be in C Sharp or in Java. So based on your preference, you can select uh, any one of those. So if you miss a deadline, you will have to wait until the uh, re-exam. You can, uh, of course, do the other workshops, uh, but you will have to wait until the re-exam to, uh, to get your final grade. The re-exam is scheduled to be in about three weeks after the course is uh, done. But don't miss the deadlines. Yeah, uh, there are, uh, of course, some, some more information here, but you can read it. And here we have the deadlines. So you should be submitting something on the 23rd of September before 12 o'clock. Then this will be distributed to your peer review group. And the peer review should be submitted before the 29th. And this pattern kind of like continues for workshop one, workshop two, and workshop three. And then we have a final workshop deadline for examination. So when you get your peer review back here, you can, can take the feedback that you get and continue the evolution of your assignment if you want to until this date. And also, if you go for grade four or five on the workshops, this is also the final date for uh, the final deadline. Does it sound advanced? <laughs> no, actually, it's, it's, it's not. Uh, you do the workshop. The workshop are kind of kind of also in size wise you should be able to make it almost completely for grade 3 on the actual occasions of course a little bit depending on uh, how well prepared you are how good you are at programming if you're re really good at programming then it will be no problem if you kind of suck at programming you will you will need a lot more time Especially for, a, for workshop two, that is the most uh, uh, work intensive, so to speak. Workshop three is a little bit more tricky and it's not so many things that you need to actually do in the workshop, but uh, it can be tricky to find those spots of change. So, all right. Are we done with the workshops? Yeah. Um, some things about registration also. Uh, have you registered on the, not on the course homepage, but on the law doc? Yes. Anyone who has tried but not been able to get registered? Uh, you, you, you in the, uh, in the, in the connect could just raise your hands so I, I could get a, uh, an assessment of how many people we are talking about here. Yeah, we have quite a few. I, I suspect there has been some, 
something wrong with, uh, with uh, this for the VECWE programs. So I will be talking to our administrator and see how she would like to have this information sent to her so you can get registered uh, as soon as possible. It's always a good thing. So I will try to find her on the, uh, on the break and then I will try to uh, get some kind of procedure for that. So, all right. Any questions? Maybe I should be saying something about myself. You guys kind of know me, but we have a bunch in Vecwe that don't know me. Okay, it's a software technology program. Ah. Take a look at uh, if you can register in, uh, in Ladoc and, and try to do it that way. Uh, but I will be getting some, some kind of uh, procedure from the administrator on the break if I can get a hold of her. You should be able to register by now uh, via Ladoc. Anyway, <clears throat> I've been working at the university for like 11 or 12 years, mainly in the web development programs and uh, software engineering programs that we had in, in Kalmar before the unification. Now, if you registered last week, nothing should have changed. Uh, before that, I did some game development and I've also done some robotics simulation, uh, working in that. And my degree is from uh, BTH, as it was called then, Blekinge Tekniska Högskola now. So, any questions about the course? administration and stuff like that, or should we get going? Yeah, the programming language I will be using in the lecture is Java. It is uh, very similar to C Sharp. And also one thing on the course homepage, if you go to the Swedish version of the course homepage, you can get a look at the old homepage from last year. And we will basically be following that in the same way. So if you prefer C sharp or if you prefer me talking in Swedish, you can probably take a look at the lectures from last year instead. And here we have the, the bulk of the lectures. And if you're really, really ambitious, you can find the old, old course homepage <laughs> from way back, uh, where you also have a lot of materials available. And you also have some uh, other lecturers presenting their view on the same subjects. So there is a lot of materials here if you uh, want to dive, uh, dive into it. The code that you hand in uh, needs to be in uh, an object-oriented programming language. Preferably Java or C Sharp. C++ is fine, by me at least. Uh, But, of course, if you need tutoring, uh, it is good to select a, a, a programming language that your tutor is knowledgeable in, selecting some very special, hard-to-find language is maybe not the smartest choice. Uh, PHP can work. Uh, I don't recommend it because PHP is not type-safe. 
so I prefer if you use a type safe language. Uh, it is uh, will be making stuff easier for you, but it is uh, more up to you actually than it is up to me. And it could be that oh, I really want to uh, train this obscure language a little bit, so you can take take the opportunity to do so. But but don't expect everyone to uh, be able to comment or correct on your code. It is also important that you can produce working software in a somewhat uh, easy way so that this can be run without you having to install five different kinds of servers and APIs and libraries and stuff. Uh, it is much easier if you get the console application and you can run it. Yeah, Java or C Sharp is, is my tip to you. Uh, C++ will probably also work if you prefer that. Uh, hmm? Any more questions? I will also be doing uh, Java as I said and I will be doing it in the vanilla style so I will just be using a text editor and the command line compiler. So it's not that uh, advanced to get into actually. Yeah, the, that, and that's my development environment. Command line and a text editor. And as you will see, Java and C Sharp are really, really similar. And C++, it's, uh, they are also really, really similar. No, uh, you don't need to use the same language in your workshop groups. If you, if you want to, you can make parallel implementations. Um, also, I think I will be, the examples I will be doing in, uh, in the lectures, I will post on Git. And if you want to prepare the same example in Python or something else, you should be able to contribute to the course in that way also. So the focus is not on the programming language you use, but rather one level above it. How is the, the, the software actually designed? And that you, then you need to show how that design is expressed in an implementation. Uh, and that can be uh, slightly different depending on your implementation language. All right, so I'm getting the hang of this English speaking actually. It's, it takes a few moments before the brain switches. I was at the conference uh, this summer and there were a lot of uh, German guys there and then I started speaking English with a German accent. So I'm really, really easy to influence in that way. So we will be doing some repetition for the programs that have read the iterative software development course. I hope you remember everything from that course. Yeah. Uh, maybe this is new or uh, some kind of repetition also for the students in Vecque. So, taking a step back, we need to kind of know where this analysis and design is uh, placed in our software process. And we have this framework to, to work with. That is called the unified process. Do you remember anything about the unified process? We had kind of phases and we had disciplines. No one? What do you actually need to do to develop software?
Uh oh. We have this uh, basic diagram of of stuff. Diagrams and graphs are always good time in that direction. So what do you need to do to develop a software? Oh, I can stand here all day. You need to test it. Of course, it's always good to test stuff. So we need to have some kind of test procedures and we need to know that the software that we have actually produced works. So testing is something that we need to do. <coughs> How many of you would like to work as testers? Implementation we have here, that's good. How many would like to work with implementation? A few at least, a little bit more. Implementation is good. We, we probably, you probably like implementation because that is basically coding, programming, writing your if statements and whatnot. Uh, so we have implementation, we have testing. What more do we need to do? Design, that's a, a good, good guess, especially since the course is named Analysis and Design. So that is something that you need to do also. More? I could listen to the course name once more. Exactly, analysis. Collect feedback from your customer, exactly. And that feedback is collected in the form of requirements. So we have a, we are doing requirements, we're doing analysis, we're doing design, we're doing implementation, and we're doing testing. Are we done? Exactly, we need to deploy our software in some way to our users. Yeah, documentation is, uh, all these steps are filled with documentations in, in, the, in different forms and formats. So documentation is not a separate step actually, and implementation is a form of documentation also. But we need to deploy. Yeah, and we repeat this several times, exactly. exactly. There are more disciplines in the unified process, but these are the, the basic ones. You have project management, for example, they say is something that is also needed, but we won't be talking that much about it in this course. But basically you do requirements, you do analysis, you do design, you do implementation, you do test, and you do deployment. And the important aspect of the unified process is that you don't do all the requirements first. You don't do all the design, you don't do all the analysis or the design first. You don't do all the implementation of the entire system. You don't do all the testing, and then one final big bang deployment. That process is called the, the waterfall model. But rather the focus of the unified process is that, this is somewhat tricky to write, but I will make it. Naturally, there will be a lot of, of requirements in the beginning of the project. 
because you will be finding out, okay, what is the actual problem here? What are we supposed to do? So taking a look at the effort for requirements, you have a lot of focus and it goes down towards the end of the project. And the same thing about analysis. You don't really have anything to ana analyze bef at first, so you need to collect some requirements first, but then you have an analysis focus and then it dwindles a little bit. thing of beauty. So, this is kind of like the, the effort uh, in each of the di disciplines over time. So you do everything each and every day, but the focus is probably more towards requirements and analysis at the start of the project, and deployment and, te and test will take more resources towards the end. Because the system is bigger. Uh, you need to test this more thoroughly. You have more test cases probably to run. And the deployment can be more tricky because the system is larger and bigger and you need to install databases and the database has grown and you need to switch and stuff like that. So more effort. <coughs> so if you take an arbitrary point in time like that, you can see, can see that, okay, we will be working some with the requirements. Uh, we will be working with analysis. We will be working a lot with design here, apparently, and a lot with implementation. Some testing and not that much deployment, but at least some deployment. Yeah, this is, call, this is called the... Uh, Jelly rat diagram, maybe in English, because it looks like the candy. Um, and this is basically the, the foundation of the unified process. So we also have a few phases in the unified process to guide us in, in the work and what we are supposed to be focusing on. Do you remember any of the phases? Inception. I won't be writing the whole words here because it will take the whole uh, paper. So the inception phase, the first phase of the process. Do you remember what you were supposed to be producing at the end of the inception phase? The goal of the inception phase is to have a common vision. We should basically know the problem. We should have tested out the technology. And we should all have agreement about the di direction to move in. I think Svante is kicking ass in the chat. Elaboration. I will be writing that there. Elaboration phase. Do you remember the goal of the elaboration phase? It is to produce a
Yeah, to create a skeleton in the application. That is the software architecture. And this should be designed, implemented, and tested, and deployed. So it is not a paper product. It is actual code working in the right environment. Then we have the largest or most time-consuming phase of them all, construction. What you basically do here is add meat to the bones. So you iteratively add more and more requirements on top of the software architecture. So you fill the software architecture with functionality. And you continuously test and deploy these uh, functions. And finally, the transition phase. Oh. Final delivery and controlled project finish. Do you remember from the spring, you kind of like practice this a little bit at least? So one thing to, to uh, reiterate once more about the unified process is that it is risk driven. You're supposed to do the riskiest parts first. And the most risk-driven phase is the inception phase, because here you can actually disregard anything really deployable and, and just focus on doing prototypes to mitigate risk. It is iterative. You, you decide on the length for your iterations, for example, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And you go through all these steps requirements, analysis, design, implementation, test, and deployment, each iteration. And naturally, the first part of the iteration is probably more focused on requirements. And the latter part of the iteration is probably focused more on deployment. So this pattern of uh, effort is repeated not only on the, the total project scale, but also in the iter on the iteration scale. And you can even, even say that it, it is repeated on the daily scale for a, for a developer. Comes into work, okay, what am I supposed to do today? Oh, I need to implement this requirement. Maybe I need to read it. Maybe I need to find some problems in it. Maybe I need to do some analysis. Okay, how, how is this requirement connected to other requirements? Uh, I probably need to at least read some blueprints for the system so I know, okay, this, these parts are supposed to go here, this is the way I'm supposed to do this. Or I need to update some blueprints to reflect the changes that I'm thinking of doing. I need to implement, produce the code needed. I probably need to write some test cases, either in code or with pen and paper. And I need to deploy this into the main branch of the project. So this pattern of work effort is something that is repeated and, and can be seen uh, on different scales in unified process projects. Questions? And as you see, this course focus on these two parts. You probably have done a lot of implementation in other courses. Hopefully you have at least had some kind of introduction to requirements and maybe worked a little bit with requirements in some project. And the same with testing and the same with deployment. But the focus of this course is those two activities. All right, I think it's time for some kind of break. Do you agree? Yeah? I need to get some more coffee and rest my voice for a little bit. And I will be taking uh, 
trying to get a hold of my administrator. So it will be taking 15 minutes of a break.